Hey, my name's Chris. Welcome to my shop. You know, I'm so tired of saying that at the beginning of my videos. <clears throat> Maybe I should switch it up. I, I used to have a guy that, well, a buddy of mine, actually, and that, but technically, my, my friend, um, technically, he worked for me. I hired him. I had the power to fire him, but, you know, I, he was my friend. He, yeah, we became friends, but... <clears throat> So let's just put it in a, in a generic scale and say, I used to have an employee who walked in every day and greeted me like, what's up, biatch? <laughs> so what do you say? I start this over. Hold on, I was like, <laughs> hey, yo, my name's Chris. What's up, biatch? <laughs> what do you think? Does it work? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, anyway, uh, today, <laughs> sorry. A little goofy mood. Uh, today's video is going to be about. Uh, uh, I'm doing this only because I have a bunch of people I need to thank that have sent me um, stickers that are long overdue on, on getting a thank you. And actually, my sticker cabinet's going mm -hmm, WTF. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take care of that. Um, but in the meantime, I don't want to waste your time doing a talkie talkie video without passing along some sort of you know information that you may or probably won't find useful, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Um, and you'll be happy to know that none of the tips or information I'm going to pass along to you today has anything to do with uh, how to make a airplane out of a glue bottle. <laughs> Just, I actually had a friend of mine the other day ask me, he says, okay, Chris, I really need to know. You need to, be, you need to confide to me. At what point in time did a glue bottle occur to you as being the fuselage to an airplane? And, <laughs> and I had to be honest with him. And I said, it was after I had about six of those. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the truth. Um, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to lie about it because, you know, I that happened. And I went, hey, why not? You know, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and uh, so I did. Um, the next day, I didn't do it that night because you don't drink and operate power tools. Safety Sally will come and spank you if you do. And she's a biatch. <laughs> out of my tongue. <laughs> anyway, uh, so stick around. I'll see if I can come up with some shop tips that are worth a darn. And uh, then I'll thank some folks that are long overdue needing a thank you. So I'll talk to you in a second. Okay, let's see if we can get uh, some hype serious for a moment. Um, you all know what these are. Yes, it's a bar clamp. Um, and I can show you a, a tip that my uh, freshman shop teacher taught me. He was, he was a great shop teacher. Uh, anyway, I was having a problem because I was trying to do a glue up. I believe I was trying to make a chessboard or something and I was trying to glue it up on this thing. And these end pieces, because they're made out of cast iron or steel, whichever the case may be for you, um, since it's so hard, they kept denting the sides of the wood that I was trying to clamp together. And that probably is a combination of me clamping it down too tight um, and also the fact that I was using a softer wood than what these are. So my shop teacher said, okay, Chris, here's your test. Why don't you go ahead and uh, m figure out a solution for that and then let me know and I'll grade you upon that. And I said, okay, here's what I came up with. Um, you take the uh, little ring that's normally on the end of these um, bars off and take your uh, first piece off here. Grab yourself a couple pieces of scrap pine, the softest wood I know besides balsa. Put that down. Put your clamp end here with your pencil. Make a mark. Okay, so we're going to be cutting off this piece right here. That's, that's going to be waste. Let's go ahead and mark where that circle is as well. And we'll take that over to the drill press and drill um, a one-inch hole, because that's what this is. It's a one-inch hole. And uh, I'll show you what you come up with. You end up with two pieces of wood like this. Um, so what you do is you, fight, you feed them both on in the right, same direction, obviously. You put your end piece back on here. And now you've got a bar clamp that is all set up. 
and ready to go and clamping down and I've got pieces of wood here that are acting as a buffer between the wood that I'm clamping up and the actual uh, cast iron ends here so that uh, you won't run into a problem of denting your wood. Now you always want to use a softer wood as it, it, between the clamp and your piece than what the piece is made out of. I mean, do, do you know good to have, you know, clamping up pine and have a piece of oak there because the oak is going to dent your wood just as much as this wood. But uh, pine normally works really well and everybody's got scrap pine laying around their shop. So it's just an easy hands-free way to put something in between your workpiece and your clamp and make sure that it doesn't get dented during glue up. Okay, more clamping solutions for you here. Um, I don't know about your shop, but I mean, uh, I have close, uh, right above my workbench here, you can see I have a number of these spring clamps. I believe I have a dozen of them um, in this size. I got five of the small ones and I have five uh, different ones over there. Um, but I also have a variety of these uh, C clamps here. And believe me, this happens to everybody, I know. So I'm like, this is not something I'm sure some, most of you can't relate to. Have you ever been doing a glue up and you find out that you're like one clamp? shy of what you need to get done and like it, and you don't realize it until after you've got glue together you've got wood sticking on top of wood that you're trying to glue together and all of a sudden you go oh my god i'm short a clamp um it's happened to me more than once uh which is why i now have a dozen of those but anyway um a quick solution you know because rather than bringing in a big old you know f style clamp like this to do with a little minor you know squeeze up on a the glue um there's a, there's a quick solution you can use in a pinch so let me bring the camera in here and i'll show you what i'm talking about Okay, uh, just as a for instance, let's say I'm gluing, I'm gluing these boards up together like this and I'm one of those uh, clamps shy and I need a quick clamp. Here's how you can, here's a way you can do it. Channel locks can be your friend. Um, you want to be careful you don't put too much force on them because these teeth will obviously eat into your wood. You can always put, I guess, you know, a little wood piece there to clamp around. But if you grab these and clamp it together while holding this, grab yourself a rubber band and simply just twist it around the handles here until you get a nice tight fit and in a pinch I'm telling you these things hold pretty I can't even move that board quick fix if you run out of clamps and you need something you need one more real quick you know these channel locks can be your friend uh, channel lock and a rubber band pretty simple solution okay one more uh, quick clamping uh, solution for you um, if you're in a bind or you're in a pinch um, and I got this from that shop teacher I was telling you about too when I was in high school um, and I apologize I don't have the exact right material to show this with you but I think you'll get the idea anyway um, PVC pipe right this is a piece of uh, four inch uh, sewer pipe obviously and it's not the correct gauge or thickness I don't know how they judge piping in PVC what they you want thicker stock than this. This is a little thin for, the, for, the, for what you really want to use it for. Um, but I, can, I think I can demonstrate uh, with, a, with this piece anyway. Um, what you want to do is you want to cut a slice off the end of that. So you have, a, you know, just a slice off the pipe. And then take your bandsaw, handsaw, whatever, and then cut it in half so this opens up. And yes, if it's the proper gauge, and this is not the proper gauge, it's actually too thin. And my shop teacher proved this to us. It was kind of funny. Uh, it was part of one of his classes and, and telling us, you know, about different clamping solutions. Um, you take this, wrap it around, and you can clamp wood together. If you have the proper gauge, he measured it. If you have the proper gauge PVC, the thicker stuff, and you make a clamp like this, it will actually provide about eight pounds of pressure when it's opened up to one inch. When it's opened up to one inch like that and you let it go, it's providing eight pounds of pressure together. So it's a quick clamping solution if you if you need to, uh, you know, a quick clamp. Uh, my, <laughs> it's funny because I showed this to my father. My father ended up getting a piece of PVC pipe and he used to keep these above his workbench much the same way I kept the, uh, the spring clamps above mine. He had a whole bunch of them and he used to use them all the time. So it's just another solution if you get uh, caught in a bind or you have a quick clamping solution that you need to fix. PVC, it works. Okay, I have one more quick tip to give you before I, uh, I want to thank the people that uh, sent me their stickers and uh, hello. I uh, I have one, two, three, oops, there's dad, four. I have four deer standing uh, over there looking at me right now. <laughs> yep. You know, if I was David Welder, I'd pull my camera off and, and show you. Um, see if they come in, because I've had a couple deer actually walk into my shop uh, looking for food, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but, you know, if you're not paying attention, you look up and all of a sudden you see a deer about this high staring at you, it'll wake you up. Um, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen today. No, there. Go. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. Uh, back to uh, 
uh, quick tip. Um, do you, uh, I know a lot of people use uh, woodworking plans. Um, I don't personally use plans very often at all. I mean, I have in the past. Um, but here's a quick tip. I mean, now if you're anything like me, I mean, I don't like to have things on my workbench when I'm working. I like to have the things I'm working on on my workbench. I know, go figure, right? Uh, so I'm going to get these plans out of my way. And I, I keep a ton of coat, hang coat hangers in my shop just because I find this stuff more useful sometimes to do crazy things with than anything else. But if you grab a coat hanger and if you put a couple of clothespins on it, that's obvious, this is obviously a simple, simple solution to a problem. And you put the clothespins on here like this, get it up. If you got a little uh, tack right there, hang them up, get it off the bench. That way you can look at what you want to do and your work surface is free. Um, if you don't have anything over the top of your head that you can put a little pin into, then you could always just, you know, I don't know, grab a piece of string, tie a, a loop in it, tack it up to your ceiling or something, and have it hanging in there so you would have a place to put the hanger and just hang it and put the plants this way. Um, it, it keeps the plants at eye level so you can look at them, go to work, look at them, go to work, and your work surface stays clutter free. Okay, what do you say we wrap this up by uh, thanking the people this video was intended for in the first place? Because I got some mail and I got some stickers. And I got one, oh, look at this. I got one from my... Uh, from my buddy in Nova Scotia, Mark Christopher, Woodmark. Mark, thank you for the sticker, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, I'll have a link to each one of these gentlemen's uh, channel down below in the video description. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Uh, Mark is a sincerely nice guy. Great dude. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Uh, what else we got? Oh, hey, Joe Whitaker. Average Joe, all the way from the UK. Average Joe's. Joe, thank you so much for the sticker, buddy. I appreciate it. Get that up in the sticker cabinet here. And, oh, look. <laughs> Had an ongoing joke with this guy for about three months because I think two and a half months ago he promised me he'd send me one of his stickers and I sent him one of mine and he hadn't sent it to me and so I, I ended up having to buy a t-shirt from him to get him to send me a sticker and it, <laughs> just kidding around I didn't have to buy a t-shirt from him to send me a sticker I just did so I could next time I saw him I could say would you mind throwing a sticker in with the t-shirt uh, my buddy Nick Ferry <laughs> Nick thanks for the stickers pal I appreciate it uh, I like Nick. Nick's a good guy. Um, what do we got? Oh, <laughs> Peter Brown. Tough time. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. And I got one more here, and it's from the fine folks at Bessie. I'll get these stickers up on the sticker cabinet. Thanks to everybody who uh, sent them. Once again, I'll have their links down below if you want to check it out. Okay? That's going to do it for me. You guys have a good day. Get out in your shop, make that first cut, and get something done. I'll talk to you later.